Good morning and welcome to Morning Prayer for Monday, August 31st. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. O mountain of God, mountain of Bashan, O many-peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan, why do you look with hatred, O many-peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, yes, where the Lord will dwell forever? The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them. Sinai is now in the sanctuary. You ascended on high, leading a host of captives in your train and receiving gifts among men, even among the rebellious, that the Lord God may dwell there. Blessed be the Lord who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation. And to God the Lord belong deliverances from death. Our Old Testament reading today is from 1 Kings chapters 16 and 17. In the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, began to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel and Samaria 22 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. And as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, he took for his wife Jezebel, the daughter of the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. He erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. And Ahab made an Asherah. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Hiel of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of Abram, his firstborn, and set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. Now Elijah the Tishbite of Tishba in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives before whom I stand, there shall neither dew nor rain these years except by my word. And the word of the Lord came to him, Depart from here and turn eastward and hire yourself by the brook Cherith which is east of the Jordan. You shall drink from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. He went and lived by the brook Cherith, that is east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. After a while the brook dried up, because there was no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it in, he called to her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of flour in a jar, and a little oil in a jug. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but first make me a little cake of it, and bring it to me, and afterward make something for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, the jar of flour shall not be spent, and the jug of oil shall not be empty until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and her household ate for many days. The jar of flour was not spent, neither did the jug of oil become empty, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by Elijah. 
After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill, and, in, and his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O son of God, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to cause the death of my son. And he went, said to her, Give me your son. And he took him from her arms and carried him up to, into the upper chamber where he lodged and laid him on his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, have you brought calamity upon even upon this widow whom, with whom I sojourn by killing her son? Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's life come into him again. And the Lord listened to the voice of Elijah, and the life of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house and delivered him to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man. Now I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth and is true. Our writing today is from the Solid Declaration of the Formula of Concord, Article 4, beginning in paragraph 16. In this matter, the following distinction must be noted. The meaning of these expressions must be a necessity based on Christ's ordinance, ordinance command, and will, and based on our obligation, but not, a but not a necessity based on coercion. In other words, when the word necessary is used, it should be understood not as force, but only as the order of God's unchanging will, whose debtors we are. His commandment points out that the creature should be obedient to its creator. In other places, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, Philemon 14, and 1 Peter 5, 2, something is said to be of necessity when it is wrung from a person against his will by force or otherwise, so that he acts outwardly for the sake of appearance, but without and against his will. God does not want such hypocritical works. The people of the New Testament are to be a willing people, Psalm 110.3, and sacrifice freely, Psalm 54.6, not reluctant, reluctantly or under compulsion, 2 Corinthians 9.7. They are to be obedient from the heart, Romans 6.17, for God loves a cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9.7. In this understanding and in this sense, it is correctly said and taught that truly good works should be done willingly or from a voluntary spirit by those whom God's Son has made free. The dispute about the voluntary nature of good works was engaged, was engaged in by some people specifically to make this point. Regarding the unwilling and rebellious flesh, Paul says, I discipline my body and keep it under control, 1 Corinthians 9.27. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Galatians 5.24, see also Romans 8.13. When it is asserted and taught that good works are free to believers in the sense that they are optional for them to do or not to do, this is false and must be rejected. It is false to say that believers might or could act against God's will, God's law, and still have faith in God's favor and grace. These articles about free will and about uh, good works can be hard to read sometimes in the Book of Concord, but the gist of it uh, that they repeat over and over in the different sections of the book is that, uh, which some people find odd, is that our confessions say that good works are necessary, and they are necessary, but they're not necessary because your doing them earns you merit with God or earns you salvation. They're necessary because the work of sanctification, God making us holy, uh, is worked in us by the Holy Spirit. And when you have the Holy Spirit, you will naturally produce good works. Um, it's actually not of your doing. It's God's doing through you. Uh, so be aware of that when we, when we read about free will or we read about um, good works anywhere in the confessions. Because if you, if you don't read it carefully, it's going to say, they just said you have to do good works or you're not saved. Well, that's not what it says. It's you can't help but do good works when you're saved. Well, that's enough about that for right now. We join in the Apostles' Creed in the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, merciful and holy Bridegroom, we grieve the fall of your church. It is our fault that the beauty of your bride is no longer recognized. Therefore, we pray you, give an increase in us faith, love, and hope in you. Root out of us all sins and vice, all strife, all disbelief, all error and heresy. Rebuke the erring, convert the unbelievers. Bring the rebellious again to the unity of the Christian church and show them the light of your truth. Protect our shepherd from all danger of body and soul. Bless all pastors and those who administer in the church and the building of your congregation. Grant them success in all things. Equip your whole church with the power and proof of the holy faith. Stand by your witnesses among the nations and further the course of your gospel in all the world. Fill all government with the fear of you and let their ruling serve to foster and preserve peace. Have mercy on our people and our country. Let the youth be brought up in discipline and in a right knowledge of you so that they may recognize your law and the way of your salvation. Give constancy and loyalty to all pious teachers. Comfort all the troubled and sorrowful. Impart health of body and soul to the sick. Grant to all pregnant women, according to your mercy, a happy result in their childbearing. To the needy give bodily and spiritually according to your good pleasure. Let those who travel be commended to the protection of your holy angels, and be a strong help to all who need you. For the sake of your holy wounds, O Jesus. Amen. O God, the source of all that is good, nourish us in every virtue and bring to completion every good intent that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit are one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.